What's happening, Hot Wheelers? Joe Motor here. I'm back with another video. I've got these two pieces I've been um, hanging on to for a while, and I haven't decided what I was going to do with them. Finally decided I'm just going to crack them open. But there's some things I really like about these two releases, and some things I really don't. So I'm just going to share those with you today, and then we're going to crack them open, take a closer look at the cars, which is really what I got these for. These are both released from Johnny Lightning, I think in 2020 or so, uh, collector releases, and they come with these diorama backdrops, um, but the cars, of course, are all die cast, metal base, metal body, rubber tires. So we're gonna take a look at the cars, but one thing that I love about these, one is, of course, it's a race car with the fuel logo and the gas station facade. That's a really cool idea. The color scheme and the design is really cool. We've seen the Sunoco Camaro released individually as well, both in Hot Wheels and Johnny lightning and then of course johnny lightning is is probably the best um brand that released the original dukes of hazard uh series which is very hard to find these days um and is no longer being produced but they did produce this and what they do with the barn find series is sort of release these uh almost like projects and progress cars that have been sitting in a barn or sitting uh neglected for years and so let's talk about this one first because uh the uh, 69 Dodge Charger here, of course, is uh, supposed to remind us of the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard, uh, but none of that original uh, graphics are on it. But if you look up close, we'll look a little later, you can sort of see the 01 that's been rubbed off there with dust and dirt. Um, and then, of course, the clever way they named this, 01 Can Imagine. Uh, which uh, kind of gives you a hint as to what car it is. But the Barn Finds is, is I love the Barn Finds series just because you get all of these really cool, uh, you know, dusty, dirty details that they put on these cars, which are always really unique. I've always been a fan of that from Johnny Lightning. Uh, but you also get a little bit of history here on the package, and these packages are huge, so I kind of have to show them to you up close to, to see... Uh, the details here but you can read that if you want to but it's always one of those things like if you're a car enthusiast to, to find an old gym like this in a barn somewhere and then restore it uh, is kind of a dream for all car enthusiasts but let's just talk about the package here for a second because it's sort of weird um, the, it looks really cool like the the details here on the graphics of the packaging are cool the way it sits there and you can kind of see that the barn is this kind of backdrop that the car sits in front of the question I have to ask is, do we really need this big, heavy clay backdrop? Is anyone really going to use that? The other question I have and criticism I have is that it's not even close to being to scale. So it ends up being this background element, and I kind of just wonder, maybe we should just go with the car. I'm not so sure that the $15 or $18 it takes to, to get one of these shipped if you, if you buy these online, uh, is really worth it. It's also a ton of packaging. Look how deep this packaging is all the way to the back. It's just a lot of packaging and a lot of extra stuff. Um, and you know me, anytime I see a lot of extra packaging, what I'm after is this right here. This really cool uh, dusty out version of the General Lee, the 69 Dodge Charger. So the harder it is for me to get in there and get to that car, and the more I have to throw away afterwards, you know, it's just not as cool to me. But I get what they're trying to do with this, the, the sort of barn finds aesthetic with the diorama background. But if you look at some of the other barn finds releases, you'll see it's the, pretty much the same barn diorama in the back. So if you collect these, you're getting the cool different types of cars, but you're getting pretty much the same barn background. So if you look over here, you can kind of see some of the other barn finds that uh, they have. I guess they only have two as of this release. They may have released more since then, uh, but you can see you get the same, pretty much the same barn, just a little bit different color. It's like how many different versions of those do you really need in your collection? And I'm not really a diorama collector, uh, but uh, you know I'm a I'm a diecast car collector. Uh, so I'll show you the back here, just so you can take a look at the uh, take a look at the information and other pictures on the back. I really appreciate that they're trying to do these diorama sets, and uh, you know make a more inclusive sort of accessories that go with these cars. But my thought is that if you're a true enthusiast for 164th collecting and a true enthusiast for 164 diorama, that this isn't going to work because it's not one true 164 uh, diorama and it's not all that functional either. So I'm not really sure. I'm interested to see what you guys think. Are you interested in these diorama sets? Are you glad that they're really big, thick, and heavy? Uh, we're going to crack it open and take a look at it up close. 
But while we're on the subject, we'll say the same thing about this piece here, which is a, uh, this may have been a hobby exclusive, I don't remember, but it's this uh, Sunoco 50th anniversary Johnny Lightning release, um, uh, which has the uh, gas station diorama in the back, but it's got the really cool Sunoco Camaro, the number 15, probably from the Trans Am series maybe, but uh, it's got the chrome wheels um, and some nice details there. We'll take a look at the car up close in a minute, but again, like filling up for today's race, the Seneca logo and the color scheme design of the packaging is fantastic. It goes with the Johnny Lightning logo, very well designed and integrated in the packaging. It's got kind of the concrete or epoxied floor texture there underneath the car, but in the back you have a gas station and I just want you to take a look at the scale. So if you were imagining a human being getting out of this car right here and going up to that gas pump, gas pumps i don't know twice as tall as the human and that just doesn't make any sense to me if you actually were going to use this in a diorama or incorporate it in your own diorama set at home i mean you know when i was a kid i wanted everything to look as realistic as possible and if it was out of scale it just didn't work so it's just weird for them to sell two different scaled items as one unit together maybe i'm being too nitpicky you guys can let me know in the comments but we'll take a look over here here's the fueled facts for this piece give you some information about the car if you want to see that and then i'll show you the back really quick on this one which has a few other diorama sets here there's the uh, military version one here there's another auto shop version here and i'm sure they'll continue to release these in different ways like there's the union 76 one there also another auto shop gas station theme there so again i really i really like the idea i love the theme of these um, i just don't know how functional or practical they are to collectors so you guys will have to let me know in the comments what you think but my biggest criticism is the scale they just don't match up in scale so i don't understand how they would actually integrate into a diorama if that's what you're into so let's crack these open get a closer look at the cars which is really what this is all about so we're cracking open the Sunoco Camaro first here, and I'll show you uh, how this comes out. This is really a weird little cardboard base, and the car is right there on this cardboard base. So I guess you could take it out and use that as a base if you didn't have anything else to display it on, but you can kind of see it's not really proportional to the car. Um, it's just kind of a big piece of cardboard, and then I'll show you kind of see how it actually comes apart, because I'm just getting rid of all this packaging. At least you can recycle cardboard right uh, and then you've got all of this extra stuff under here to get the car out so I'm gonna twist these out and then I'll show you the car all right just a quick note here I don't like this at all I really don't enjoy having to unravel all of this uh, twisty tie and it has to actually go through the axle or sort of the wheel walls of the car I'm not really into that I really wish they wouldn't do that in terms of the packaging now if you're a person that collects in the package and and these are going to stay in the package you know no worries at all but if you actually want to crack open these cars and collect them for the cars you really have to get through a lot of extra packaging just to get to the car and you might end up even damaging the axle getting these out so i'm going to try to be really careful and take my time here uh, but i won't torture you uh, watching me put this together without uh, fast forward so i'll be right back All right, so that was way too excessive in terms of packaging for me because uh, those twisty ties, the harder you pull on them to get them out, it's gonna bend the axle. So if you're impatient like me and you just wanna rip them out of there, you're likely to just bend this entire axle. And you know it may not make a difference. Johnny Lightning's not really super well known for their, their smooth rolling cars, but you could bend the axle enough to where it just doesn't look right even when you display it. So I ended up having to use some wire cutters here and just um, shorten the length of them just so they were easier to pull out. But this was just so excessive to keep these tied down to a piece of cardboard uh, just to keep this in place for the packaging. So that's a big thumbs down for me uh, because, you know, I'm interested in the car and, and the easier it is to get to the car, the better for me. And also, we've talked about this before, the rubber band is also a no-no because if you leave it in the packaging and it's exposed to any humidity or weather change over time, this rubber band will actually start to break down and could end up uh, damaging the paint on this car. The car itself is a pretty standard uh, Johnny Lightning all metal casting, the metal body and metal base. The graphics are pretty good on this one. You can get up close, you can sort of see the Goodyear lettering on the tires. 
not too crazy about the wheels, but I think those are probably, I don't know, uh, uh, authentic Krager wheels. I'm not for sure. Uh, but uh, sponsor badges there are pretty clear, nice and sharp. Number on the side, the Sun Sunoco um, logo there and the pinstriping, pretty nice details there. All black interior and then painted tail lights and painted headlights as well with the black grille. I don't think the hood opens, it might, but it's pretty barged down in there, so I'm not going to try. Um, but there's the sort of raw Johnny Lightning metal base there with treaded tires. Um, so that's a, I like this car and I just wish it had come in some easier packaging, but let's take a look at the uh, rest of it here. Cause now that we're inside the package, you can see that the gas station diorama is actually blistered to the back of the package. So it's actually glued in. So we're gonna now rip this off. See if we can get into this. So now we've got this big gas station background, which is, it's actually very heavy. It feels like it's made of like a hard polymer clay or something like that. It is heavy. Uh, definitely not just a piece of molded plastic. It is a very heavy piece. Um, and the graphics on this are actually pretty cool. You've got the brick texture there. Nice, clear, sharp signage. You've even got the sort of service entrance door back here behind this little trash can. And then the two uh, sort of old fashioned gas pumps there. And these are the sort of windows with graphics in the windows. And it's kind of got the storefront look to it. So these are, you know, I see a lot of artists these days doing uh, dioramas, especially not just with cars, but just uh, storefront dioramas and stuff that are super detailed and amazing. So look, if the car was to scale, this would actually be really cool. But take a look at how small the car is compared to the background, the diorama background. So the scale is really off and it doesn't make any sense to me why these two things would be integrated into uh, any kind of authentic to scale playset. Now, if I just use it as a background, no big deal. We could just throw it back here and it's kind of a cool background to use in videos. So maybe I'll, maybe that'll show up in a few more of my videos. But again, I'm just interested in the car and the quicker I can get to it, the quicker I can get it into my display case and take a look at the car, the better. Because now not only do I have this like almost, uh, I don't know, it's not a pound, but it's like gotta be like six or eight ounces worth of, of, uh, solid clay plastic polymer whatever that is back there and I also have about uh, five ounces of packaging that I'm gonna get rid of now hopefully they'll recycle this but we'll see that's just a lot of excessive packaging to get to this car and I'm not sure that the whole thematic packaging is worth the 15 bucks you pay because uh, you know if it was to scale maybe so I would be much quicker to buy this if it was just packaged in a regular Johnny Lightning package all right, so let me get all this packaging out of the way and we'll take a look at the charger. Okay, so same deal with the charger here. We're gonna open it up and here we have this big cardboard base. So I'm gonna go through the same process here that I just did with the Camaro and we'll do that really quickly. And we're gonna remove that evil rubber band, which over time would just destroy the paint on this beautiful dusty old charger. Let's take a look at the diorama here, which again, it's uh, blister packed to the back. So we're gonna rip that out. All right, so there's the barn background. Uh, again, it does stand on its own, which is kind of cool. But what's weird about it is, you know, it's flat on the back. It's done at this perspective, right? So if you have it straight on, it kind of looks, uh, it's angled off to the side. Because if you do it like this, it, it looks real weird. Look at that. That looks real strange. So it's gotta be like put flat in the background so that it looks right. Uh, and it's also extremely heavy and um, it is not to scale. So if we were to pull this car up, I mean, it's maybe a little closer. Maybe you could fit this in through the front door if you really had to. So whereas the gas station is a little bit bigger than it should be, the barn is definitely a lot smaller than it should be. So I'm not really sure what these are for other than just the novelty of the package and the appearance. And I'm not sure that more collectors are buying them for that. I mean, these are, I don't know, 15, 16 bucks, probably close to 20 if you order them online. 
and uh, because they're so heavy and they end up being in this really big box and I don't know that collectors are really interested in these and again you can tell me in the comments but once you get to the actual car it's fantastic this old version of the 69 Dodge Charger the General Lee is fantastic so let's look at it up close you can see that original orange color underneath the rust and the scratches and again this is uh, reminiscent of the projects in progress series and I really enjoy the barn finds as a series from Johnny Lightning because I just love all these sort of muddy dusty rusty details that they put on these cars even the the windows are just frosted out with all kinds of dust and dirt uh, the interior is still kind of clean they didn't really go for a rotted out interior put any shredded fabric or anything in the interior uh, but you can still see the gear shift which is cool the bf goodrich tires there and a lot of dirt on the tires themselves and if you look really close here on the side you can sort of see remnants of the zero one that used to be on the side of the car here which is super cool so if we look towards the back here you can sort of see some painted details on the tail lights you can see just the la thick layer of dust and dirt on top and even the back window here I'm not sure if that's a manufacturing defect or if that's part of the effect of the broken window there but then as we move back over to the other side you can still see remnants of the zero one on the side of the door there even the front grille is, is pretty fantastic it's still got some lettering there you can see it up close you can see the Dodge Charger RT logo even even through the dust back there and we'll flip open the hood here and see what we can see inside looks looks pretty clean in there so again, I'm really pleased with the car itself. It's, you know, metal on metal. You've got the dust and dirt details all over it. It's a really classic sort of Johnny Lightning treatment. It's even got the playing mantis on the bottom there, which is when this car originally was uh, cast and released. But um, I'm really pleased with the car itself. It's gonna go in the collection with some of the projects in progress. So I'm really happy with that. It's gonna look good in the display case, but you know, what do I do with this barn? I guess some of you, if you have an aquarium or something like that, you could put it in there and let the fish swim around it, but they can't really swim through it. Gas station one is kind of cool as a background piece, but again, it's just not to scale. So my question to you guys is, are you collecting these? Are you interested in these diorama series? And if so, are you adding them to your own dioramas? Are they just novelty? Are they just kind of worthless? I definitely think it's over packaged and some of the packaging can actually damage the car if you're a loose collector like me. So if you are taking them out of the package, you gotta take your time and be careful not to twist axles and damage paint and all of that other stuff. Anyway, I'm interested to hear what you think about these diorama releases from Johnny Lightning, whether they're the barn finds or some of the other racing releases. To me, the cars are classic Johnny Lightning releases, really enjoy the cars. Just not sure about all this other extra stuff. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for spending some time in the motorhood today. You guys keep on motoring, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.